In the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about the basics of radiographic exposure factors. That is how they impact your x-rays and how you can control them for the most optimal image in any situation. Now, exposure factors are something that many of us, even qualified radiographers, don't really know that well. And I think there's a few reasons for this. First, it may have been a while since you reviewed your exposure factors, or maybe it wasn't taught to you properly to begin with. And now with the advent of digital imaging, there's almost no need to know your exposure. Because these days we have things like AEC, automatic exposure control, which as the name suggests, automatically selects your exposure. And most x-ray controls have many presets for the body regions of interest. And the exposure latitude in digital imaging is quite wide when compared to screen film radiography, which in short means you can give a pretty high or a pretty low exposure and still get a decent image. Whatever the reason may be, by the end of this video, you'll know the basics of your exposures, what they are, how they work, and how you can use this to adjust the quality of your radiographs, which is crucial to know because it allows us to manually adjust to get a diagnostic x-ray, which will get yourself out of a sticky situation when the machine is refusing to cooperate. Before we begin, timestamps below if you need to skip around. Cool? Let's go. We can adjust the x-ray beam of an exposure with these three key primary factors. One, the KVP, or the kilovoltage peak, sometimes referred to as KV for convenience. MA, the tube current in milliamps, and time in seconds. And often the current and time are combined or multiplied together to give the MAS. Now I'm gonna take you through each of these factors so hopefully we can understand what they're all about. Let's start with MAS. Right off the bat, I already mentioned that MAS is a combination of tube current, MA, and the exposure time or length in seconds. What is current? What's well, defined as the flow of electrical charge facilitated by electrons. And what's the length of an exposure? What's well, how long we allow these electrons to flow from the cathode to the anode. The MAS therefore determines the amount of x-rays coming out of the tube and controls what's known as the beam quantity, which as the name suggests, is to do with the number or quantity of x-ray photons in an exposure event. So whether we increase or decrease the MAS, or we do it separately with the MA and the time, it increases or decreases the beam quantity respectively, and it does so linearly. Which means if we're going from 100 to 200 MA, or 0.02 to 0.04 seconds, or 5 to 10 MAS, all of these scenarios result in doubling the MAS, or basically doubling the exposure or beam quantity. Make sense? Oh, and just a quick note, in the context of medical imaging, the time exposure is measured in seconds, as we've seen when trying to calculate the MAS from its components. However, just want you to appreciate that a one second exposure is extremely long when talking about general x-rays. And you would very rarely go over half a second or 500 milliseconds unless you're doing a breathing technique of sorts. So if you ever see the exposure represented in milliseconds rather than seconds, particularly on the x-ray console, now you know why. All right, now let's move on to KVP. Now recall what it stands for, kilovoltage peak, or the peak voltage applied to the x-ray tube, which ultimately determines the energy of the x-ray photons. Note that if I set 100 kVp, it doesn't mean that every single photon has 100 kilo electron volts of energy. It just means some of them will reach a peak of 100 kV. Very quickly, what the heck is a kilo electron volt? Well, the kilo just means a thousand, just as a kilogram is a thousand grams. And the electron volt is the amount of energy gained by the electron as it's going through a potential difference of voltage in a vacuum. So another way of thinking about it is that let's say you're at the airport and you come across these moving walkways, those flat escalator type things. And the question is, once you step on the walkway, how fast will you be moving from point A to B? Obviously, the faster it's moving, the faster you'll be moving with respect to the ground. Obvious. And so if you think about this walkway as a vacuum tube, the faster the walkway is moving equates to a larger potential difference in that vacuum, which means we, the electron, will be moving from point A to B much faster, that is with much higher energy. That's what an electron volt is, and that's what we're determining when we change our KVP, the energy of the beam, where some of those X-ray photons will reach a peak of that said energy. The KVP therefore controls what's known as the beam quality, which refers to the energy and therefore the penetrability of the X-ray beam. That is, how much energy the beam needs to be able to sufficiently penetrate the anatomy so we can differentiate between the different tissue types. Interestingly, KVP also controls the beam quantity, which as we know is to do with the amount or the quantity of x-ray photons in an exposure. Now at first it may seem a little odd as to why this is, but here's an easy way to think about it. For a given MA of let's say 100 and about 50 milliseconds, which equates to 5 MAS by the way, because 100 times 0.05, if we increase the KVP from 50 to 70 for example, we've increased the energy of the photons. The more energy the photons have, the more more of these electrons can therefore move from A to B or from the cathode to the anode. 
in that set exposure of 50 milliseconds. It's like if we have 100 people stepping on a walkway moving to gate A at 10 kilometers an hour. And so in a set time of 10 seconds, let's say only 20 of our people move past our imaginary finishing line. Whereas the same 100 people on a walkway to gate B, which is going at 15 kilometers an hour, you may have 30 of them passing the same finishing line. The more electrons we get passing through in a set amount of time, which equates to how fast they're going and therefore how much energy they have, ultimately results in higher beam quality. That's how I like to think about it. Let's say our aim is to maintain the same exposure. Now, if I were to increase my KVP by 15%, I need a half my MAS or just multiply by 0.5, same thing. And if I decrease my KVP by 15%, I need to double my MAS. Again, because the MAS correlates to the exposure in a linear manner, whereas the KVP has an exponential relationship. A doubling of the KVP does not double the exposure. It actually does much more than that. So how does it work, I hear you ask? Well, there's something called the 15% rule, and it applies when making adjustments to the KVP, where a 15% increase in the KV will approximately double the exposure, and a 15% decrease will roughly half the exposure. And note that it's a 15% increase or decrease in KV, not a 15 increase or decrease in KV itself. For example, a 15% increase to 100 KV is 115 KV, whereas a 15% increase to 50 KV is not 65, but it's about 57 to 58 KV. An easy way to do this is just to multiply your starting number by 1.15, which just adds 15%. Now it's important to understand that apart from the primary exposure factors, a well-exposed radiograph also depends on a bunch of extrinsic factors, most notably the thickness and the composition of the anatomy being imaged. Basically, which area of the body are you trying to image? How large is your patient? If the exposure factors of the X-ray are set too low, your image will be underexposed and will therefore be very contrasty and have a lot of noise which is where you see that dotty static looking appearance. And this can make it difficult to see details in an image. And if it's really bad, it'll require a repeat. On the other hand, if the exposure factors are set too high, your image will be overexposed and will appear washed out and have much less contrast. And if very high, the edges of the anatomy start looking burnt. Again, if it's to the point where it's affecting diagnostic ability, you will need to repeat the x-ray. And so knowing what exposure factors are, how they work and what they do can really help us fix a poorly exposed radiograph. At this stage, we have a rough idea of what KVP and MAS are, but what effect does increasing or decreasing each of these factors have on our image? Well, I've touched on this a little already, but basically MAS determines the amount of signal in an image, which corresponds to the number of X-ray photons. So the more photons we have, the more signal there is in the image. And the less we have, the more noise there is in the image, which is the absence of the signal. This is kind of like when you take a photo in a poorly lit environment and your image has a lot of noise in it. The relationship between the signal and the noise is referred to as the signal to noise ratio or the SNR. That is a high SNR means there is a lot of signal in the image and the image looks great, or it has very little noise with respect to the signal. Whereas a low SNR means that there's a lot of noise in the image and it starts to look a little grainy. And this grainy look is sometimes called quantum model. Just a fancy way of saying the same thing. And of course, given the linear relationship between the MAS and the beam quantity, a larger MAS is proportional to a larger number of photons and therefore signal, equating to a higher signal to noise ratio and dose to our patient. What about KVP? Well, we said earlier that it controls the beam quality, but also the beam quantity. Starting off with the beam quality, KVP primarily controls the contrast of the image. That is a lower KVP increases contrast and a higher KVP decreases contrast. And remember, we're not talking about post-processing here. We haven't even taken the image to get to that point yet. We're talking about purely changing the exposure parameters to get a well-exposed image. And apart from contrast, KVP also affects the signal to noise ratio, where an increase will improve SNR and a decrease will introduce more noise. And a note about its relationship to radiation dose, generally a lower KVP equates to an increased dose to our patient. This is because the photons have less energy and therefore more will be absorbed in the tissues of our body rather than just passing right through to the image receptor. In reality, however, it's almost always the case where you need to adjust all three primary exposure factors or two, depending on if you combine the MA and the time. As an example, if your image has optimal contrast, but is a little grainy, you just increase your MAS. If your image has a really high contrast, but the SNR is good, then you'll just increase your your KVP to improve the contrast. But because this also increases the beam quantity or the signal, 
you want to decrease your MAS accordingly. And you do this to achieve the same signal to noise ratio that you started off with. A general guide again is if you increase your KVP by 15%, then you would half your MAS. Now this is all to minimize patient dose. In an ideal scenario, you would bump up the MAS to get a much better image quality. And just note that you will get a decent image if your exposure factors are close enough. In other words, one that is diagnostic. All right, that's it for now. I hope I didn't fry your brains. In the next video, I'll show you how to master your exposures in five minutes or less. So click here for that and stay curious.